Hello, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the helpful things to know when setting up Google Meets for video conferencing with your students during e-learning and supporting your bridge students or doing a little bit of both. So Google Meet is a video conferencing tool. All of the students and teachers in BCSE have access to this tool, but you do have different rights and permissions within that tool. Teachers are the only ones who can create and to start a Google Meet. Students don't have the ability to create their own. And students can only join a Meet if a teacher has created one for them, can only join ones within our Google domain, which is our BCSE Google accounts. So to get started with a Google Meet, you have a couple of ways that you can get going. If you're a teacher, you can go to meet.google.com just by typing it in across the top of your toolbar. Otherwise, you can click the Google Apps menu over here and scroll over and Meet should be one of the options there. The difference here between staff and students counts is that students won't have the ability to start a meeting. They only see a prompt to join a meeting. So what the teacher can do here to start a meeting is you'll click join or start a meeting. And this is a really important step right here. Don't just click continue. You need to make sure that you create a Google Meet with a nickname. And the reason being is that creating a Meet with a nickname puts in the advanced security settings so that students can't join before you, the host or the teacher is on the call. Students can't re-enter a Google Meet after you, the teacher, have left. So that way you don't have a bunch of students on an unsupervised Google Meet call without an adult present. The other helpful thing with Google Meet is that it allows your students to, if you create with a nickname, um, the link expires after the host has left. So again, they can't rejoin without you there. So the important thing is to make sure you create your Meet with a nickname. So you can actually reuse the same nickname every single day. You just have to go and make one every day. And that's what I would recommend that you do is whenever you go and you create a meet for every day that you're teaching your students, give them one nickname and just reuse that over and over again. And anytime you come in here and it's almost time for you to start your Google Meet, you create a meet using that same nickname. So for mine, maybe it's first period history. I'll click continue. The other key thing here is that it does give you a prompt there to do that so you don't see me twice. It does give you a prompt to schedule Google Meets using Google Calendar. And again, the drawback with doing that is if you use Google Calendar to create your Meets, it does not put those security settings in place. So again, you could have students on a Google Meet call without supervision and without you being there. And I don't think any of us probably want that to happen. So after you've created your Meet using that nickname, you get the prompt here. If you don't see yourself or have your camera or microphone here, make sure you give permission if a little alert comes up. And after that, you just click join now. All right, so it shows some join information there. So you could share this link with students and that's how they could join this specific Google Meet with this nickname. Um, my, my bit of advice is that whenever you have students join a Meet, if you plan to reuse that same nickname every single day, this link is only good for this Google Meet that I'm on right now. So if I'm wanting to reuse this nickname, I shouldn't share this link because that won't work as soon as I leave. It'll expire within 20 seconds. But what won't expire is my nickname if I keep using that over and over again. So what I would do is whenever you ask students to join a Meet the next day, just send them this link, meet.google.com, and then tell them to enter a code, which is your nickname to join. So if I do that, just to kind of change views here, I could join a meeting. All I have to do is just enter that nickname and then I'm in the meet with my teacher. So that's kind of a workflows tip there is just to reuse the same nickname every single day and don't have students join using this link. Just have them join by typing in the nickname on their browser. So there have been some updates to Google Meet from last spring when we did e-learning in the past. So I'm gonna go over a couple of those. The bottom toolbar is where your host controls are. So you can turn on closed captions for your students. Um, this actually just turns it on your screen, but your students could turn on closed captions for themselves. So I think it's helpful to walk them through how to do that. You as the teacher can present your screen. If you wanted to give students the ability to present their screens, they technically can have that turned on. And I'll show you that here in a second. Your microphone and camera settings are here. This is how you end or leave the call. If you leave the call, 
Um, students are still on this until you remove them. All right. The options to change some of the settings are over here in the host controls. And now only the person who created the meet has this. So your students don't have this button. And what this button does gives you some ability here to change some of the settings for yourself. So if you turn off quick access, this makes it so that whenever someone tries to join your meet, if you turn that on, it's on by default, then um, you get a little prompt across your screen to let them enter the room. You can turn that off or on depending on what you wanna do. This is turned on to where others can share their screen. If I don't want my students to have the ability to present now and share their screen, because I wanna be the one to do that, then I could turn that off. You can also turn off the chat. There isn't a way to message a student one-on-one -on -one within a Google Meet, but you do have the ability to turn it off to where either they can all message with each other in you or no one can message. And then the other host settings are here, and this is just turning on your video and your audio as well. So those are some of the settings there. The join information is here again. Um, I would not recommend, like I said, sharing that link. I would just use the general meet.google.com and have them enter the code. Other settings across the top, this shows everyone that is on the meet and you can add other people. If you have a co-teacher, you could add them and give them host controls as well. So they have some admin settings in this call. You pin someone, then it puts their name at the top of the chat and at the top of the video feed as well. The chat is here. If you had a conversation, you can toggle the settings on and off there as well. And timestamp, and then here are video screen options. So if I had more people on this call other than just myself, I can change my view settings and you can change it to a tiled view and view up to 49 people screen, see their face at one time. Um, but the other helpful thing is that Jamboard, which is Google's collaborative whiteboarding tool, now integrates with Google Meet. So if I wanted to open up a Jamboard really quick, I could start a new one from scratch, or I can choose one from my Google Drive. if I already have one made. And this is really helpful if on the spot you wanted to do a really quick check for understanding with your students or give them the ability to kind of illustrate something or if you wanted to demonstrate how to do something. So what I did here is I pulled one that I had already made. This is a template I found online. And your students, you can change the share settings here in this Jamboard and give students this link so that all of them have the ability to edit so they can add post-it notes for themselves and drag and drop. So maybe we're doing a really quick quiz where I ask them, all right, what do you think is the correct answer? Or how are you feeling? Or which corner best represents your emotions right now? If I had little emojis in those corners, then the student could drop the post-it note with their name on it and they can create their own post-its. So that is an option there. And since I opened this Jamboard in this Google Meet, I could present it on my screen but what it also does is if you notice over here, I have a little paper clip beside my join information. There's attachments now, and this is another way that you can direct your students to get to that Jamboard and be working on it. Whenever you open or create a Jamboard in a Google Meet session, it adds it as an attachment here. By default, the Jamboards are set to view only for students. So only you, the owner of the Jamboard and the host of the meeting has editing controls on that. But like all Google Documents, you can always change the settings right here and share and change it to anyone with the link can edit. All right, so that's the other fun feature there. The last helpful thing is that you can record your meetings here too and all of your meetings save into Google Drive. Now, if it's a pretty lengthy Google Meet, it will take some time for that file to process. So just know if you're recording meetings with your students that it won't be instantly after the meeting ends that they'll have access to that video. It could take a couple of hours if it's a longer video recording. If you wanted to edit your video recording too, you could also do that in Google Drive using the Screencastify video editor. It's a part of the Screencastify premium tool that we have. Whenever you're ready to end the meet call, you have a couple ways you can do this. You can ask students to leave the call. If we had other people who would join this meet, I could also remove them from the call as well. I can mute them in my settings here. And it's helpful if you have all the students leave and if you remove them right before you go so they're not in this call by themselves. And whenever I'm finished, I'll click end. 
And this screen looks different than what your students have. As the teacher, I have the ability to rejoin the meet. So this is helpful because if I'm the teacher, maybe I accidentally left the call and I didn't mean to, or I lost internet connection and I'm stuck on the screen, I can get back and join it. But my students don't see this. All they see is return to home screen, which takes them back to this plain Google Meet screen where they can enter a nickname and then join the call again. Within 20 seconds or so after a teacher has left the Google Meet that they created, that they made with a nickname, the link and the whole Meet expires and the nickname expires and the students can't join again until the next day or maybe you use the same nickname over again and create a Google Meet from there. So those are just some tips. I do have a written guide that goes along with this if you want to walk through that a little bit more of a step-by-step -step process. But if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask and thank you for everything that you're doing.